This year, the first lamb of our flock was born toward the end of April. It was a good birth, without any trouble. In truth, no one knew the lamb had come until we heard its first cry. My big sister, Tomasita, went out to have a look. And Leocadia, my other big sister, as well. That night, all the more important members of the family left the house to see the firstborn of our flock. My mother, and even Cyclone, the dog. The others were already out there, beyond the corrals where they had camped with the flock. Waiting. My father Blas. My big uncles, Eli and Bonifacio. Also Gabriel, who is one big brother. And Blasito, who is the other. Only the little ones were left at home. My little brother, his name is Pedro and my little sister, Faustina. As for me, I'm neither big nor little. I'm Miguel. That's my trouble. And the big part of this trouble is with these mountains. They're called the mountains of the Sangre de Cristo. And I think of them like they were my mountains. Because always, for many years, Ever since I was a little boy, I've had one great plan. To go up high into the Sangre de Cristo mountains and there to spend the whole summer, many, many months. High up there is everything to make a man happy. Here, too, is everything to make a sheep happy. Rich food, fine water. Every year, the sheep of my father go up into these mountains for the summer pasture. Every 
every year they've gone up without me. Without me care. I'm not big enough to be a pastor. This is what they tell me, my father and the others. But this year they'll see. Everyone will see. I'll show them I can do the work of a pastor, the work of a shepherd full grown, a man's work. This year I'll get there, all the way to the very top of the mountain, the Sangre de Cristo. Many lambs came, great many, maybe 20, 30 every day. There was much work for everybody, and always more kept coming. The new ones, many, many new ones every day. lambs and so much work. I too was very busy. I helped wherever there was a chance. Some days it was good. They would tell me I did all right. Some days, it is not so good. There are times when it's very difficult to get a sheep to understand the work that has to be done. But one could not be sad because of this. My grandfather came to help. Even though he no longer had any need to work. He lived now with my big uncle, Eli. And besides, he had spent many, many summers in the mountains, close to the sky. Indeed, it was my grandfather himself who started this flock. It happened very long ago. In the old times, my grandfather, like his father before him, only worked as a shepherd. He worked for a patron, a man who owned much, much land and who had many flocks. But in payment for his work, my grandfather took sheep for himself. That was the beginning. Now I was unable to count all the sheep that the Chavez family owned. Many things he showed me, my grandfather. How to work with numbers. The same number on the mother as on the child. So we would know, in case they went apart, which one belonged to which.
In the next few weeks, I began to work with many numbers, bigger and bigger numbers. The numbers that I made were very important. How else could one know who went together? <laughs> Those who refused to have a family, mostly a young sheep with her first child. They found out. This way we all worked, so that each one in the flock learned how important it was to be a family together. But always there is an unfortunate one. A lamb alone, without any mother. One of a twin, maybe. And the you who is the mother, she's not able to feed both. Or the lamb of a you with not enough milk. An orphan. With sheep, there is one problem. A ewe will have to do with no one but its own lamb. These unfortunates, they must be given help. And sometimes, when a lamb dies, my father does a trick. mother is happy. She knows from the smell that her little one has come to life again. The lamb is happy. Once again, it has a mother. In a day or two, my father will take off the fleece and they will remain happy. But for all the orphans, it is not possible to do this trick. Thank goodness, not so many lambs die. 
The girls take care of the others. Last year, my big sister, Tomasita, raised five orphans by herself. The orphans are lucky. They will not die. But they cannot be happy. After all, they will remain on the farm all summer. They will never become a regular part of the flock. They will never climb with the rest up into the mountains of the Sangre de Cristo. Before the end of the lambing, it happened. There came the chance to prove I was ready to go up into the mountains, a real pastor. For the sheep, the storms of the late season are very hard. The next morning, at the table at breakfast, they talked of bad news. A band of sheep had disappeared in the night. A whole bunch of ewes and their lambs, gone. Maybe I could help. But they said no. It was not up to me to help in such trouble. No. I had to go to school. Juby is my very old friend. That morning, he came to me with news, important news. He'd seen them, the missing sheep. He'd seen them, our sheep. He was sure. But they were far, far away. I could get them. It would be a great thing if I, Miguel, brought home the missing sheep. It would mean much.
everything worked out just the way I had planned. Grandpa said I did all right. Like a real pastor. There was no excuse. I promised my father I would never miss my school again. Then he thanked me. My father. He actually thanked me for helping with the flock. I went back to speak with my father, to explain that soon it would be summer and then there would be no school. Then maybe I could help with the flock in the mountains. I could go up with the others. Yes? No, said my father. It was not yet time. There was Gabriel, my bigger brother. He would go with the older men as in the years past. My time had not come yet. Even grandfather agreed. I had to wait. But I could help, my father told me, with the one orphan. He would arrange it should be mine this year. I could spend the summer at home taking care of the orphan. said no. Even my grandfather, who had called me a real pastor, he too said no. There was no one else. Except maybe there was someone else who could help. San Isidro. San Isidro is the patron saint of our village of Las Cordovas. This year we celebrated San Isidro Day on May 15th in the new chapel that is being built by my father and our neighbors. The celebration begins in the night at Vespers. Never before in my life did I pray so hard. On the morning of San Isidro Day, everyone comes to High Mass. We all walk in the procession to hear the blessing that is put on the fields of our valley. Yeah. 
San Isidro is the patron of farmers everywhere. Everyone prayed to him for a good harvest. Like the others, I prayed. But my wish was not so easy. Me, I prayed for a miracle. After the prayers, they prepared to celebrate the holiday, like every year, with a fiesta. They were there from all over the valley. Everyone came to have a good time. As things turned out, it was a fine fiesta. Almost everybody did have a good time. Gabriel. It was only right he should go up in the mountains instead of me. Who could do anything as well as Gabriel? for me to wait until I would be another Gabriel. That would take forever.
Maybe we would join the flock, both of us. If only Sonny Cedro... If only he heard my wish. By the time the shearers came, it seemed like my wish was being answered. By then, I was a regular part of all the work. The men who shear our flock are the Marcus brothers. They come from the north, from Colorado. They cut most of the wool from the sheep in the valley. They have good machines. They shear better and faster than in the old days, when my father used to clip our own sheep by hand. Everyone was glad to see them. They are fine people, the shearers. They go everywhere. And in all the places where they go, they have a good time. Cutting the wool is like a harvest. It makes everyone happy. But the coming of the shearers meant one thing for me. It was getting near the end. Once the shearing was finished, and the war was off. The flock would leave for summer pasture, for the high mountains. There wasn't much time. Only a little time was left for them to see that, that they couldn't leave me behind.
four minutes and new sheep. They work very quick, the shearers. They're paid for each fleece that they clip, and in order to earn good wages, they must work in a hurry. And we too, all of us must work in a hurry to keep up with the shearers. I kept up with them. I worked very hard. And by the end of the day, with my help, almost half the flock was done. <laughs> In the house as well, there was much hard work to do. The shearers ate at many farms, and at each farm they were given only the best things. My mother prepared like for a fiesta in order that we should not be disgraced. children, Faustina and Pedro, had to wait. I waited, too. But since there seemed to be room enough, I thought maybe I would eat with the other men. good time. There were so many good things to eat and so many good stories about all the sheep herders up and down the Rio Grande Valley. It was the best supper I ever had. It went well the next morning, too. I had the job to hang up the wool sacks. Me, that is, and Uncle Bonifacio. We were to bag the wool together. The importance of such work is this. The sack must be packed tight and must be stamped down into the bag. Absolutely solid.
there was much wool. It was a good harvest for everyone, except me. But in spite of everything, my wish was answered just one week later. It was Faustina who told me. A letter had come. A letter for Gabriel. A letter had come. And now Papa says I must go with the sheep this summer to the Sangre de Cristo. What was this? It was true. Gabriel would not go this summer. I was to go instead of Gabriel. Gabriel was leaving to train to be a soldier in the army. Gabriel was leaving for a long time. It was just as I wished, except Gabriel was leaving us. It was true. There was the letter. The time had come for him to go and be a soldier. Like my uncle Eli had been a soldier. Gabriel, too, would send a picture to show how he looked in his uniform. But that's all he could do. It didn't make any difference that I wanted him to stay. Whatever I wanted didn't make any difference. He had to leave us. There was the letter. I knew now it was me. All of this was my fault. I made a wish, now I was given my wish. I no longer wanted my wish. Not anymore. Not if it meant Gabriel had to go away. I no longer wanted it. I prayed, I prayed as hard as ever before to get my wish back. But when I came back into the house, the letter was still there. The next morning, though, there wasn't any letter. But then it had disappeared. How Gabriel found out. Thank you. 
down there by the river, Gabriel talked to me for the first time as if I was full grown, a man like himself. The letter, he explained, made no difference. It told him where to report, that was all. He was going because sometimes when there is danger far off, a fox maybe or a wolf, a shepherd must leave his flock to stop the killer before any sheep are lost. Just so, beyond the oceans into which this river flowed, there was now a danger, not only to the sheep, but to our whole family and to all the families like us who lived with the freedom to make the wish that was in their hearts, like my wish to go to the mountains come true. There were those who had put an end to such a freedom and destroy everyone's wish but their own. Gabriel was going as the shepherd must to face them so that one day he and I, we could be pastores together. We left the same morning, Gabriel and the flock. Gabriel was leaving for two years on a journey that might take him to many parts of the world. To drive the sheep would take us only six days through the Carson National Forest to the high pastures where we had the permit to graze. It was not so far. It would not take us so long. But it was like Gabriel had said, this was the same path we were walking. He out in the big world, and me in the great mountains of the Sangre de Cristo.
in this place, many men named Chavez have come. And my grandfather as well. And my father. And my uncles, Bonifacio and Deli. And my big brother, Gabriel. And now, Miguel. Thank you.